Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Rugby Canada webinar series presented by DHL. My name is Jackie Titley. Uh, I am the Manager of Training and Education with Rugby Canada and happy to be here with Drs. Summer Christie and Carolyn McEwen. Very happy to have you both uh, with us uh, this evening, this afternoon, depending on where you're joining us uh, in the country. Um, we'll do uh, just a, a brief uh, spiel on how things work tonight. Um, and then we will get right to the presentation. Uh, lots of good stuff. Very excited to hear uh, what these two wonderful people have to say. Uh, lots to learn tonight. Um, all previous Rugby Canada webinars have been uploaded to the Rugby Canada YouTube page, so free uh, and, and accessible to you there in case you want to catch up on any that you may have missed. Um, additionally, uh, for uh, all of you out there, unfortunately, there is still a ban on all rugby activities. Um, so even though it's getting very exciting, we're getting very close. Um, hold on and check with your local representatives, your 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 local prov your provincial union. Um, we are very close, but uh, but don't run out there just yet uh, onto those pitches. Um, we promise we'll let you know as soon as you can. Um, I will introduce our wonderful presenters here tonight. As I said, uh, uh, Dr. Summer Christie uh, is here with us. Uh, she's a former member of the National Senior Women's 15s team um, and has a PhD in sports psychology, uh, is here with us tonight. Uh, Dr. Carolyn McEwen is also here, um, also a former member of the National Senior Women's 15s team um, and also holding a PhD in sports psychology. So very exciting. Uh, both of these, um, both of these uh, women have personal experience in high-performance sport um, and professional experience now supporting athletes and, and others in the sport world. So, again, uh, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Very exciting uh, to have you both, uh, and I'm excited to to hear about some uh, some coping mechanisms and some ways to support ourselves and each other uh, in this in this interesting new reality we find ourselves in. Um, so I will hand it over to uh, to you, Carolyn, to get us started. Thanks, Jackie. No worries. All right, we're good to go, Jackie. You see it? We are good to go. Wonderful. All right. Th thanks, folks, for uh, being with us here this evening. So um, Summer and I are really uh, looking forward to the upcoming session. And we're just going to talk a little bit about uh, life off the pitch and adapting to the current realities. Um, so I think we're all fairly aware that this is sort of a unique situation that we're all in. And, and uh, what are some strategies and ways that we can move through this particular time? And as Jackie mentioned, supporting each other and ourselves through that particular time. So what we would like to do this evening, we're going to try something out here, is we would like or invite you to participate uh, with us. So we're going to have some questions for you that we'd like you to answer, as well as reflect on and also to see other people's responses. Uh, so how this is going to work is we would like you to go to menti.com. So some of you might be familiar with this platform, others might not be. So we're going to take a second. So the first step is to go to www.menti.com. And when you get there, there you will be prompted to enter a code. So that code for today's session is 486254. So again, go to www.menti.com. You'll be prompted to enter a code which is 48 62 54. And if you happen to forget all that, it's actually going to be at the top of my screen here for the rest of the presentation. So for whatever reason, if you got kicked out. So what you can do is you can respond to the questions. You can already see some people actually clicking on the heart button that's available to you as, long, as soon as you've logged in. So go ahead, test it out. Um, it's always fun to uh, click a button and see what happens. So as soon as you do that, you start to see the hearts coming up. So that's people logging in um, and responding to the slides. So feel free to respond to the different slides as we go through our session this evening. Awesome. So we've got six, seven people. Fantastic. All right. That's excellent. So what I'm going to do now is, again, the, the information is at the top of the slide here, but let's actually check in a little bit about who's actually on the call this evening. So we can't see each other, but let's actually try to connect a little bit about um, what our roles are within rugby. 
Um, so you should see a new screen on your uh, particular mentee page if you had logged in through your phone or if you had logged in on your computer. And so you can just uh, tell us what your current role is in rugby. And uh, I know many of you actually hold several different hats. So feel free to check all that apply there. So I'll just give you a few more seconds or um, to, to try that out. So again, I encourage you to log in. The other thing I wanted to mention is that all answers are anonymous in Mentees, so hopefully um, you'll feel comfortable responding to the different questions. That's wonderful. So we have some athletes, we have some coaches, parents, referees, um, staff, volunteer, people who build um, the rugby community. And um, I just wanted to mention that it's fantastic that we have such a, a a group of folks here uh, tonight um, as uh, we're all actually experiencing something uh, similar in one sense maybe very differently but we're all missing rugby and so we, we all sort of have that common experience so um, thanks for being here this evening. So this is what we're going to go through tonight. So I'm going to start off by first talking about and acknowledging the current situation that we're in. So maybe some thoughts and some emotions that we're having about uh, the current situation and perhaps some of the challenges that we might be experiencing. Um, and then Summer is going to take over and she's going to talk about uh, perspective and focus during this time and purpose and structure. And we'll finish off with a little bit of uh, tips for around overall well-being, as well as provide you with some tools and resources that may be able to help you through this time as well. All right. So the first thing um, that is important important to think about, um, not to say the first thing is important to think about, one of the things that is important to think about when we um, are going through a particular challenging time and, and we're all off the rugby pitch, um, but there's also many other things that might also be occurring in our particular lives at this particular time. And so it's important to check in and, and reflect upon how we're doing and uh, what we're currently experiencing. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the slide here. And so I want you to look at your mentee screen. So if you haven't logged in yet, that's okay. You can do it now. So go to www.menti.com and use the code 486254. So the same one. So I know we have many folks um, logged in there. And so take a moment to reflect. And I want you to enter two words that describe how you are feeling right now amidst COVID-19 and being off the rugby pitch. So there's no right or wrong answers here. Take a second. Well, give it a few more seconds. So no right or wrong answers, just whatever you're feeling. Good, we'll give it about 10 more seconds here. And as you're waiting, um, read some of the other folks' responses as well. And so perhaps um, you see yourself in some of those emotions or have saw yourself in those emotions. Um, perhaps, uh, you know, you can empathize with how somebody might be, be feeling in this particular moment. And so we're getting um, some response around frustrated, restless, uh, disappointed, bored, re-energized, rejuvenated, overwhelmed. And there are varying responses and there's no right or wrong way to experience this particular moment. Um, but I wanna, one of the things that I do encourage you to reflect on is that how you experience this uh, particular time period, none of us have really gone through this before, um, it will ebb and flow and our emotions will change and they'll be dynamic in this particular time. So it's really important that we check in and just even get a sense of how we are feeling in this moment um, and how we are experiencing things. So thanks for your contributions, folks. I'm going to ask you another question. So have your mentee ready. So what is a challenge you've experienced during the last couple of months? So again, if you're just joining us, that's okay. So if you go to www.menti.com and use the code 486254 when prompted, and all answers are anonymous. So take your time. So what is the challenge you've experienced during the last couple of months? Yeah. 
And as these come up, um, read other folks' responses. It's really cool that we have folks from all over the country right now. Um, and so we can see um, how people are doing and maybe some of the challenges. So whether it's a lost job, I'm sorry to hear that. Changes personally and professionally. Uh, finding time to move in between having to be on a screen so often. I can certainly empathize with, um, with that one. Uh, so mean feeling motivated to train. Uh, so I'll just wait a couple more. There's no right or wrong answers here. Let's give it a few more seconds. Take some time to reflect. Take a few moments to read other people, other folks' responses. And see missing other players or maybe teammates, or if you're a coach, maybe missing the athletes you work with. So finding motivation, there's no job, no sports, can't see friends and family. Yeah, these are very challenging situations. Of course, working from home with children adds a whole other complexity to the particular situation as well. Returning to play to rugby with no rugby to play. Yeah, absolutely. And so I, I do want to acknowledge one of the reasons um, why I put this up here is I want you to take a look at um, how people are experiencing this. And, and also maybe you see yourself in some of these responses, but perhaps um, you can empathize with some other people and what they're going through as, as well. And yes, we're all experiencing this challenging situation of being away from rugby and adapting to being off the pitch, um, but we're perhaps all experiencing that potentially in very unique and, and different ways. Thanks, folks, for, for entering those and contributing. So I'm going to ask another question. And so we've identified a challenge that we have um, potentially come across over the last little bit here. And so I want you to kind of reflect on that. Um, if your friend was going through this challenge, how would you support them? Okay, so if you had a friend that was going through this challenge, how, what advice would you give to them? Awesome. So you may tell them it will be okay. I'm here to listen. Awesome. Yeah, a big hug. I know I, I certainly miss a big hug. So keep those answers coming. And while you're waiting, take a chance to, you know, reflect upon what, what you would tell them and, and how you would support them. Yeah, so you're only capable of doing so much, cut yourself some slack. Yeah, maybe same daily or weekly goals. Tell them you're here to support them, that this won't last forever, um, to continue reaching out and that it's okay to feel this way. Maybe have a creating space to take time to feel their feelings and help them and see some benefits to the time we have now. Yeah, so try to maybe maximize um, opportunities, but also create space for feeling those feelings. Okay. Thanks, folks. And, and maybe think about this advice and, and what type of, um, how, how you would want to be supported as well. So oftentimes we think about how we would support our friends through certain challenging times, but we don't often extend that support to ourselves. So I'm curious to know, how often do you apply the advice you would give to a friend during a challenging time to yourself? Okay, so oftentimes we're really good at, um, well, I'll, I'll let you answer the question here, but. Excellent. So again, if you're just joining us or if you'd like to jump on um, and, and help us out with the uh, participation and reflection, please feel free to do so. You can go to www.menti.com and the code is just at the top of the screen there when prompted. All answers are anonymous. Fantastic, folks. Right. So 
Thanks, folks. Sorry, I had to put my my um, my pointer over the screen. I do teach a lot of statistics, so I really like numbers. Um, but um, I think one of the take home messages here is that nobody really got past. There's a few people who got past five, but not always uh, do we always apply that advice to ourselves. Um, sometimes never. So sometimes we're very hard on ourselves or we don't extend the same compassion to other people, oh, sorry, we don't extend the same compassion to ourselves that we often do to other people. So oftentimes we tend to put or extend that compassion to other people that support that care, um, but we often find it sometimes a little bit more challenging to extend that to ourselves. So thanks for that. And I have, I have one more question here in this series of questions. So bear with me a moment. I want you to now reflect on, so many of you folks identified that, you know, it's actually kind of challenging to apply this advice to yourself. And so what do you think some of those challenges are? And how might you be able to overcome those challenges? So I'll just give you a few moments here to think about and reflect on it. Yeah, so maybe being very hard on yourself. And maybe self-doubt, telling yourself a, a narrative that's not necessarily true, so we tend to be very hard on ourselves, yeah. Carolyn, as we're, uh, as we're um, having these uh, responses trickle in, uh, I'll just take a minute to remind everyone that we also have a questions function um, in GoToWebinar that I forgot to mention in my preamble. So uh, taking the opportunity now, if any questions come to you throughout the presentation, we'll have a Q&A at the end. So feel free to type those into that questions tab as they come to you and uh, we'll get to them uh, at the end. Fantastic. Thanks, Jackie. Yeah, questions are always welcome. Okay, so as these trickle in, just take a moment to um, look at other people's responses. And again, you might see yourself in some of these responses, but there might be some interesting tips too about how you can overcome these challenges as well that maybe you could try. I joined late, but I'm feeling it is that bad. No, that is not. You can feel however you want to feel or however you do feel. That's okay to feel positive. It's good to feel positive emotion. No problem there. Okay. So I'm seeing a lot of self-criticism here being really difficult on ourselves. Uh, so finding flexible ways to use time in the day differently in terms of overcoming these challenges. Yeah, so one of the take home points here is that um, everybody deals with challenges and, and, and this moment is obviously very relevant in terms of over, uh, well, challenges presenting themselves and they may present themselves to each ourselves um, based on the individual uh, very differently. Um, but we're often, when we are confronted with challenges, we're often very hard on ourselves and we often beat ourselves up quite a bit. Um, that tends to be that response as opposed to extending ourselves to ourselves that compassion that uh, we often extend to a good or close friend. And so one of the things that I wanted to talk about, thanks again, folks, for being willing to um, express yourself and take the time to reflect and, and share those responses. I think it's really important to see how other people are feeling or doing in this particular moment. And if they're doing well, that's, a, that's wonderful. If they're experiencing challenges, that is also um, absolutely okay as well. And so one of the things I wanted to talk about is adapting with self-compassion or practice self-compassion particularly in times of uh, whether things can be challenging or you know they're just very different um, our routines are very much disrupted we don't have the our social connection looks very different um, you you don't get those big hugs maybe that you often do um, you don't get to show up to a rugby pitch and see all your buddies that predictability and that certainty within that 
And right now I'm seeing um, just from observations that are happening um, like across the internet and, and many other other places um, and talking to people, there's often a lot of narratives around um, productivity and I have to do X, Y, and Z, or I have to keep going just as everything is is absolutely um, fine or, or there's nothing happening. And, and so just acknowledging that it's okay um, to extend that kindness to yourself. So what is self-compassion? Well, basically it's this idea that you actually extend the kindness to yourself that you would to other people. Um, so for example, we might all be going through challenging times, or maybe some of us aren't, that, that's okay too, but um, we all experience challenging times. Um, the other part of self-compassion is, um, so instead of, should back up a second there, but we extend the kindness to ourselves as opposed to judging ourselves and our responses. Um, we also are look for common humanity. So do we see other people um, in, are other people having a similar experience to us? So that's one of the reasons why um, just a few slides ago, I was asking you questions and I wanted you to look through other people's responses to sort of build a sense of common humanity um, that we are experiencing something and we're experiencing it together. And yes, our responses might be a little bit uh, different, but we, we are in this together and um, to try to um, not feel so isolated within those particular experiences. The other component to self-compassion is mindfulness. And so the idea with mindfulness is that we are aware of our thoughts as well as our emotions. And so you'll hear mindfulness, it's, it, it's around quite a bit right now. It's, a, it's um, growing in certainly popularity and particularly within the sport domain as well. And so uh, you'll hear, for example, if you practice yoga, you'll hear a lot about mindfulness and the ability to practice mindfulness. And so um, the idea of mindfulness is that we're not just ignoring our thoughts and our feelings and we're doing those check-ins and we're trying to reflect, how am I doing? Um, what do I need other additional support? Um, what do I need uh, to, feel, to feel okay? And uh, we're going to share with you some great mindfulness tools um, and apps at the end of the, um, the session here today, too. So if that's something you want to practice. So again, practicing self-kindness involves three things, uh, extending self-kindness to yourself, common humanity, or trying to see your experience in other people, as well as practicing mindfulness. So trying to build awareness of our thoughts and our feelings. And so the series of questions that I just led you through um, were actually a series of questions that were meant to develop uh, self-compassion. Um, so all of a sudden, it doesn't mean that you're high in self-compassion right now, but just, again, that idea of reflection of how am I feeling, what are some challenges, um, seeing other people in those particular experiences. Uh, so you will ha be, have an opportunity to have these slides. So if that's something you want to journal about later, um, that might be a great opportunity to help you build self-compassion, just going through a series of questions. Uh, so why do we why are we interested in self-compassion? Well, more globally, but also within the sport context. There's been quite a bit of literature coming out in the sport context that it helps us to manage our challenges, particularly uncertain ones. And it can act as sort of this buffer against when we have uh, when we experience quite a bit of challenge, um, of course, in our everyday lives, but also within the sport context. Uh, it's also linked to uh, increased well-being, so our overall well-being. And people often experience less self-criticism. And one thing I just wanted to address here, um, this often comes up in the sports uh, community, is that a lot of, uh, you often hear from a lot of athletes or even coaches or, or referees or everybody, we tend to be hard on ourselves. And um, some people often talk about how self-criticism drives them or motivates them, and but that can also lead to quite a few negative emotions as well. So I just wanted to clarify that self-compassion is actually not linked to complacency um, as well. It's, it's a bit of a common myth around self-compassion. Um, so again, uh, just the, the practicing self-compassion um, in a particularly challenging time can be can be helpful to help us adapt to our current situations. Um, some other suggestions for helping us adapt to the current situation is naming um, the emotions. So the first uh, question I asked you there um, around uh, the word cloud. So is our there's a lot of power in actually naming and checking in and identifying the emotions that we're feeling. Because then we can come up with strategies to either cope with them or maybe manage them. Or, you know, if we're feeling great, that's awesome too, right? So, um, but just even our ability to name those emotions. And that, again, is linked to, to mindfulness. 
Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is there's a lot of power in sharing experiences. So again, I wanted to thank you folks for the ones that shared experiences um, earlier when I asked the questions. Um, there can be a lot of power in that and seeing other people's experiences. And I think right now, one of the things that we might feel a little bit disconnected, maybe not, um, but oftentimes you go to a rugby pitch, you go to a practice, you go through a game and you have the shared experience. And, and right now that that's not able to happen. And so trying to think about how we can actually share um, experiences that are obviously safe, um, but also um, how we can share our own experience because we're all going through something very different that we've we've never gone through before. So there's a lot of power um, in sharing our experiences and we just need to find uh, perhaps new ways to share those experiences. So maybe that's through different team meetings, maybe uh, that's getting a group of friends together um, over Zoom. I know we're, some of us might be Zoomed out, I, I get that. Um, but just creating spaces, uh, particularly for coaches, um, maybe even considering um, how athletes might be able to share their particular um, experiences with each other and creating pathways to be able to do that. All right, um, before I turn this over to Summer, I just wanted to go through one exercise with you folks. So as I said, um, emotions um, will come and go and, and we there might be uh, feelings or times where we feel overwhelmed and or stressed. And in particular, when you're in the middle of a pandemic, these this might happen more often. Um, but regardless of whether you're currently experiencing uh, feeling overwhelmed or stressed, I just wanted to give you a few tools that may help you through those moments. And whether you're a coach, referee, athlete, um, we all need tools to bring us back to the present moment. And so these particular techniques are what we call uh, grounding techniques, and they're meant to actually bring you back to, to the moment. So bear with me. This is going to maybe look a little bit funky on a webinar, but we're going to do it anyways. Uh, so the acronym here is FIRST. Uh, to help you remember it, again, uh, you'll be, you can ha download these slides afterwards if you want to take a look at these. Um, but F stands for focus, so focusing on our breathing. So let's all together, let's do a breathing exercise. We're going to take three deep breaths, and I like to call it belly breathing. That is not the scientific term, but that is my preferred term. And so when we do belly breathing, I like to put my hand on my stomach just to make sure I'm really expanding it so I'm taking a nice deep breath. And we're going to do four seconds in, six seconds out. So again, four seconds in, six seconds out, and we're going to do three in a row. So let's all, we've all probably had an interesting day, maybe a hectic day, been on Zoom a long time. So let's take a moment to try to bring ourselves back to the present. So here we go. I'm jumping on screen, so you're not on your own here, Carolyn. And out. Appreciate the support, Jackie. So we'll breathe in for four seconds. Expand your belly and breathe out. So push the air to your stomach. And one more. And out. Awesome, thanks so much. Okay, so that's first. I feel better already, so hopefully um, that helps you bring it back. Uh, so that's the first one. So first um, is focus. The next one is I. So particularly if you're feeling overwhelmed, I stands for identify. So let's see what we can do right now. So the, the idea here is that you identify and it's called five, four, three, two, one. So the first one is identify five things you see. So I'll give you a second to try to do that. For example, I see my computer, I see the green light, the recording, a blue exercise ball, water glass, pen. Okay, so once you've identified five things you see, let's go to four things you hear right now. I'll be quiet so you don't have to hear my voice. Damn, you were one of the things that I was counting. Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll throw you one. Yeah, I'll throw everybody <laughs> bone there. We'll talk a little bit more. All right, three things that you touch. So, for example, I'm sitting in a chair right now, so I feel the touch of the chair. I can feel my watch. Okay, so two things you can smell. For some of you, I hope that's dinner cooking. And one thing you can taste. 
So moments of feeling overwhelmed and panic, that's a great one to do to try to, again, bring you back to the, to the moment. All right, so we've gone through focus, identify, and then the next one we're gonna do root. And this is one of my personal favorites. So it's literally grounding. Um, so dig your heels or root your heels in the floor. My preferred time to do this is actually in my metal big spike cleats because you get really into the ground. Um, and I want you to focus on the tension in your heels when you do that. So the idea here is to focus on your body and how it's feeling. All right, the next one is stretch. Okay, so stretch means you, you can literally stretch. So you can extend your fingers. I have no idea what this looks like on camera. My apologies, it's a bit funky. Um, your arms, your legs, as far as you can. You can roll your head around. I'm sending all the common humanity to the front row players right now who maybe can't roll their heads very far anymore, like me. All right. And then the last one is T, so tune into your body. So um, to really uh, feel the sensations that you're feeling in your body. So the weight of your body in the chair, you can wiggle your toes and your socks, and maybe you're not wearing any socks. Um, feel the back, your back against your chair. So one of these techniques might work better for you. You might do a combination, um, but I just wanted to introduce them to you. And again, they're, they're meant to bring you back to the present. And you can imagine even in a game or uh, training, if you're feeling like your mind is wandering um, or you're feeling overwhelmed or you're feeling overstressed, these te are techniques that you can use to help try to bring you back into the moment. All right. All right. Thanks for your participation, folks. I know Summer has more, but I'll now turn it over to Summer. Uh, sorry, just getting my webcam and myself unmuted. Uh, thank you very, very much, Carolyn. Um, I appreciate that. I, when you were sharing that and when you mentioned the uh, shared experiences, I just wanted to share um, what my club has been doing. We've been having Zoom trainings um, uh, every, like twice a week where the coach leads us in a kind of hit training or an outside run activity type thing. But we see each other face to face and we cool down together and we chat and it makes all the difference um, to be able to see and reach out and, and actually feel connected with your group. So I highly recommend it. Uh, like Zoom drinks is also good, but I highly recommend, you know, just getting a Zoom on and maybe do yoga together, whatever. It reminds me of when you, you cool down, you go through their training and you're chatting. It's just like a little bit of a sense of normalcy there. Anyway, so Carolyn, if you could just switch the slide. Please. Awesome. So I want to talk about reframing this COVID situation. Um, we've been in a long time now, and I think we've all gone through various feelings and emotions where we might have been happy and excited and gung-ho to like volunteer and then really disillusioned and disappointed and feeling pretty bad after a while or unmotivated. So we might have been through all of these things. So I guess what I just want to say to reframe the situation um, is it's tough for everybody and everybody is at a different spot. I love this um, metaphor, this the Chinese word, Chinese character for the word crisis, Y Chi, is actually made out of two words. And it's a great way to sort of situate yourself and gain perspective or reframe in a situation. So if you could switch that, Carolyn, please. So the top one means danger and the bottom one means opportunity. So threat or opportunity. So it's the same thing like when you're going into a big game and you're going up against a real tough competitor, you can see it as a danger, like they're bigger, they're stronger, they're faster. Or you can see it perhaps as an opportunity. Hey, this is our opportunity to maybe show what we can do and play as hard as we can or you never know what's gonna happen. So in every situation, we can choose to see it. So, and, and what I wanna highlight here, and particularly in a time like this, in a pandemic where everybody has different experiences, is that it doesn't mean we're ignoring the fact that it's dangerous or that it's a threat or our opportunities might actually be different. Um, 
it's really just to say that in any situation, we can acknowledge the threat, but also sort of look towards, well, where's the opportunity in this situation too? So you can think about that for yourself and how you've been experiencing COVID. Like maybe there has been a sil silver lining as everybody's saying now for you in that. If you could switch the slide, please. One great way to reframe and lean into the situation. So we've reframed it, we've acknowledged that it's sort of danger or threat, but perhaps there's some opportunity in it. And this comes from a blog story from an athlete that I really respect. He's a, he's a, um, a national team sledge hockey player, uh, Paralympian. And he wrote a blog article about journaling and it really, it really stuck with me. And I think it's perfect for this situation. So he had recently been paralyzed um, in a motocross accident and he was in the hospital room. Um, and a lot of people had brought him journals and said, Hey, you know, you should, you should, you should journal, like it'll make you feel better, blah, blah, blah. And he, he was just kind of the one that just said, you know, I'm, I'm not about journaling. It's not my thing. So, but then somebody came and challenged him with the question, said, well, how can you use this? And he picked up his book and that's an image of the exact uh, exercise and reflection that he went through in the hospital room shortly after being paralyzed. He said, how can I use this? And for him, it, it's not a big change, right? It's, I can work on my attitude. I can read more. I can write a book. I can build relationships. Right. So it's really about acknowledging the situation, gaining a little perspective on it, maybe the acknowledging the threats and the hard parts, but looking into the opportunities and really leaning into it, saying, how can I use this? So you can switch to the next slide. please. So I want to I'm going to ask you a couple questions, too, um, but this will frame what we're, where we're going to go next with what we can control and um, and how, how to go about structuring our day. But try and enter into the Mentimeter, you know, what are your current worries or what ifs in this situation? So in the situation of COVID, what are my concerns? What am I worried about? Uh, what are the big what ifs on my mind, the big unknown? So you can enter that as you go. Um, I see. Yeah, what if sports doesn't come back? What if there's no season? Just anything that you feel might be worried I won't be as strong. It's really a different environment that we get to train in right now. No season. Right. What other worries might you have? What what to do post COVID? Well, OK, here they're coming in. Sport doesn't come back. Things say stay, stay like this. Yeah. What if things don't change? What if I lose my job? Long time to reset, long time to get back to normal no seasons, feeling overworked. That is, it's really interesting. We all come from a different perspective. Some of us are coming from, you know, we're, we're used to being alone. I joked with Carolyn, doing a PhD is basically like social isolation. So this is not too different for me. Um, but some of us are working with kids. We've got, we've got to m manage multiple jobs more than we ever did before. We might feel overwhelmed, right? Worried I won't be strong. Societal norms changing. That's a really interesting one. That's fairly, fairly deep. My kids getting bored. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that we might be worried about. And now I want you to go to the next question, if you can, Carolyn. And the next question really is going to push you to think, well, what do you have control over in this situation? So we may not have control over a lot. We don't know when COVID's going to stop. We don't know perhaps when rugby is going to come back, if it's going to come back, but list the things that actually are in your control. There you go. Encourage. Oh, I like these are happening really quickly. So it means you must have thought of it. it okay. Encouraging others, connecting with family, attitude, creating space for fun. How I use my time, my actions my actions, encouraging others. Yeah, that's fantastic, listening. 
I'm gonna give you one more chance. There's a few more coming in. That's great. My thoughts, my attitude, my actions, listening, strength, use of personal time, connecting with family, how I look at things. I really like that. That's terrific. So if you could maybe move to the next slide, um, Carolyn, please. So that's an exercise that I'd love you to be able to take home and do with you. Um, we often, especially when we're overwhelmed, we get wrapped up in the what ifs. And, and this goes with like COVID or not, we have going to what if we lose? What if I, what if I don't graduate, blah, 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 right? We can just, we can get really wrapped up and overwhelmed by all of those thoughts that are really truly out of our control. So what if it gets worse? What if I can't pay rent? You know, what if, what if I lose my fitness? And a real deep question, I think that a lot of us rugby players, coaches, staff, you know, without a season, who am I if I can't play rugby? And that's a really deep question. That's questioning your identity and a real challenge, right? So what I want to say is write them all down. Just put them out there. Just write them down, everything you might be worried about. And it's not to say that they don't matter. It's not to say don't like be hard on yourself and say, uh, I shouldn't be thinking this or ignore this. I'm going to pretend they don't exist because that's not true. They're actually real worries that we have, especially in a situation like this. So what I want you to do is write them all out so you can acknowledge them, but park them. OK, so it it doesn't mean you're letting them go. You're acknowledging them, but you're sort of parking them. You're putting them to the side because the second part of that is you, you choose what to focus on. And you went through that. So you go, what is in my control? Well, my attitude, how I physically distance, finding creative ways to train from home, uh, my actions, my my feelings, who I talk to, my social circles. Right. So, again, it goes back to just working through this acknowledging all the things that just say them put it out there and then say what's in my control and in that moment you can say I'm going to choose to focus on this right you can take that deep breath um, like Carolyn said and then you can choose to focus on that and maybe it's finding a job working on something else training at home whatever that might be uh, if you can switch to the next slide please so now I'm going to talk quickly about pur purpose and structure, and that actually came up. You can switch the slide also. Um, that actually came up as something that was uh, um, um, something that a fear of losing purpose. Um, I would like you just quickly here is really can you list what if you can share anything with this group, okay? What have you done to maintain motivation and give yourself structure in this time? So. Our world was turned upside down and things changed. So what have you done to help yourself cope, to help yourself maintain motivation, to, to give yourself structure? Any ideas, any suggestions? Let's make this a kind of a sharing group because, you know, I'm going to have suggestions, Carolyn, too, but we can learn so much with those shared experiences and reaching out to each other. So go ahead and throw them in. And Carolyn, if it's not popping up automatically, you can you can make that happen if that's okay. Good sleep, schedule my day, connect with teammates, keeping busy with webinars. I'm glad we can help you with that. Don't go crazy with too many webinars. <laughs> um, morning schedule, that's a fantastic one that I think I've been hearing from a lot of the athletes that I work with, just creating a routine that's pretty normal and self-compassionate that gets you going in every day has been really helpful for a lot of them. Um, I've trained, I've Zoomed, I've set small goals every day. Fantastic. Those small goals every day, important. Um, daily routines, walks with my partner, develop my coaching. Yeah, like, so maybe we really tr totally took it as this is an opportunity where I can actually use this to learn more, do something different. Social activities within the club, that's fantastic. That's great. Any other thoughts? You can throw them in there. Let's let's share your best kept secrets on how you're coping. And I know that, well, for sure, Zoom drinks with my friends and my rugby teammates is definitely one that I do. Scheduled in. Awesome. That's great. So maybe you can switch the slide then, Carolyn. Thank you. So I have this slide up here because in a time like this, when we get overwhelmed, we're going to get overwhelmed with the what ifs. And sometimes when we don't have 
if your athletes or your coaches, you're used to your life being structured, like when to eat, what to do, what to train, whatever. So if it changed, we can feel totally lost um, and not really know what to do. So, and the best place to start is really to go back to your purpose. So your purpose uh, is, is your raison d'être and or ikigai in Japanese, which means your reason for being. So reflect on that, spend some time thinking about what gets you up in the morning and, and, and beyond just right now, okay? Like, like what is your overall purpose in life? What drives you, you to push yourself, your teammates, do more, work more, train more? What's your drive, your reason, your why? And I know, as an example, Mikhail Kim Kingsbury, the freestyle skier, he had the Olympic rings um, posted on his ceiling that said, J'y vais gagner. So that means that was his purpose. It wasn't, I'm just going to get to the Olympics, I'm going to win the Olympics. And so that's not something that's happening tomorrow. That's happening in the long term. But it's something that can motivate you every day when it's difficult or when it's not difficult. So I... Before I got to play for Canada, I, put, I, I taped a little cue card to my floor next to my bed that said, I will play for Team Canada. And I looked at that every time I stepped out of bed in the morning and it was a reminder. And on those trainings that sucked or if the weather was bad and I didn't want to go, I went and that's why. And a good purpose starts with that. Um, and it gives clarity to how we do what we do and why. So if you could switch to the next slide, please. Awesome. So you've all done goals before, so I'm not going to actually go into too many details or, or on goal setting, etc. But important in this time is keep those dream goals, your purpose, your motivation as motivation. Okay, so they're still there. We might not know when we're going to get a chance, but they're still there. So keep them at, as motivation, as in put it on a piece of paper, put it on your mirror, use that on the days that are hard. But in the moment, in the day, focus on the performance or process goals. So the steps you need to do to get there. And I know it's not ideal. You don't maybe have access to a gym, but what can you do, right? Um, main perspective and self-compassion. So I say this with goal setting because we're high achievers, right? But right now it's different. So you need to have a little self-compassion. Like I'm not, um, like if I can't fully get everything I need out of a training, maybe that's okay and maybe my emotions are a little bit off and, and just don't feel the same just be a little more compassionate with yourself there and then you've all heard of smarter smart goals and maybe of smarter goals and the only thing i would like to highlight here for this situation with covid is the r so what i what is best is if you have those outcome goals and you and you make a plan but we don't know when we're going to come back to sport but if you create it like as if it was going to come back, if it doesn't come back, then you simply reevaluate and or readjust your goals. So it's not like you failed at anything. You're still progressing towards something. It's just something that's out of your control. So simply create those goals, work on them day to day, and then reevaluate if, if, um, if you need to after. So you can switch the slide again, please. And give yourself structure. So some of you have said that as far as how I can um, manage in this situation. It's really, especially because as athletes, as coaches, we're so used to structure. We really need to find that here to help with the motivation and to help with us in our daily um, to get through this. So set those daily goals. Focus on the process goals. Block off time for what's most important. And right now, maybe that's more about sleep, taking care of your mental health your physical health, your social time, right? Block off that time for that Zoom call with your friends or your teammates um, and make sure that you get the proper sleep. Make sure that you're getting outside every day. Like vitamin D, that is so necessary right now, like for your mental health and everything. Um, and, and I say be in the moment, whatever that moment is. So if you go back to those circles with what's outside of my control and in my control, if we spend our time in the outside of my control, we're gonna feel overwhelmed. It's gonna be hard. It's, it's not ideal. So if you choose to be with your friends or training, just train, right? Those things aren't gonna go away, but I can focus on my training. If I'm studying, study. If I'm working, 
work. If I'm enjoying time with friends and family, enjoy times with friends with, and family. So I really like the quote, just be where your feet are. So that outer circle is there. We've acknowledged it. That's great. But come back and be present in the moment with what, what is most important to you. Um, and then, uh, so with that, I, I do have a, a sheet that I'm going to, this little um, structure or daily planner, I'm going to share as a PDF for anybody who wants it. So you can either email me or Jackie at the end of this, I forgot to share it with you already, uh, but it's there if you want it. It kind of has the major things like uh, your goals, block off time, etc. So I'm going to hand it back to Carolyn and perhaps we're closer to get into questions. All right, thanks, Summer. Um, so um, when we're thinking also about planning our, our days, I think one of the things that maybe, uh, particularly in these times, that um, our well-being should be sort of near the forefront. And that, that looks a little bit, um, perhaps how we might develop our well-being or, or support our own well-being might look a little bit different at the moment. And so um, these are things that you've probably never heard of before, but they're just friendly reminders. And I like to call them, or I've kind of taken it from somewhere else, but I like the Thrive Five. Um, and so that's sleep, nutrition, physical activity, uh, social connection, as well as helping others. And so um, these are things that we often know about, but they're often hard to implement. And so the first one, uh, when we think about our overall well-being, um, it's easier to uh, move through certain challenges if, if we're feeling uh, okay, basically. And so when we think about sleep, sleep is one of those things that really enhances our well-being. And so some of the time, maybe our schedules are a little bit off or we don't have our usual schedules. We don't necessarily have places to be. Maybe our home is our, is our workspace or our study space or our training space. And so sleep might be a little bit inconsistent. And so well, the reason I bring this up is sleep, um, everything is so much easier to manage when you're not tired, uh, whether that's emotions, thoughts, um, et cetera. Um, it's so much easier to move through your day, obviously, when you're not tired. I don't think I'm telling anybody anything new here, but just a friendly reminder that if you if you are, are maybe experiencing this as a quite a challenging time um, to maybe think about uh, sleep, particularly as it may relate to anxiety and making sure that we're trying to get enough sleep and scheduling that. And so uh, Summer's uh, provided an awesome tool uh, to support that and, and help us with that in scheduling our sleep. A nutrition, a uh, friendly reminder, of course, to eat well. I'm not a nutritionist, so I won't spend too much time there. Um, but physical activity, I just wanted to acknowledge or talk a little bit about how physical activity is potentially changed. Um, so we know that physical activity is linked to mental health. Uh, so when people are more physically active, they're moving, they tend to feel better um, with their mental health. Now, I bring this up because in our rugby context, um, I, I'll fully admit as a player, like I trained so that I I would not die on the rugby pitch on the weekend. Um, that's a little dramatic, but you know, to, to try to perform okay on the actual rugby pitch. And I often didn't think about the mental health benefits of physical activity in the training that I was doing. Um, but now our training is maybe looking a little bit different for athletes, but maybe also coaches. We're not around necessarily people who are also training. And so our physical activity in our training spaces might look a little bit different and so that motivation might ebb and flow differently than when we could actually see our buddies and see our teammates and so just a friendly reminder that physical activity is also connected to um, mental health as well so um, being physically active can even if it's going out for a walk it doesn't have to be intense super intense workouts and and trying to figure out what are some ways that we can be physically active and still have fun because uh, right now I know a lot of uh, athletes are in full training mode but without the you know the kind of fun part of playing also rugby and how they're active in that space as well so something to think about um with regards to uh so uh, with regards to physical activity just as maybe summer mentioned um how our club or her teammates get together and they even do zoom physical activity you know just to create that connection because we often have connection through physical activity 
Um, with regards to social connection, um, we've probably heard a lot about this in the media, but how do we stay connected to each other and how do we create spaces? And so whether those are Zoom activities, uh, like where we actually do something together, playing a game over Zoom, um, or it, depending on where you are in the country and what is the current guidelines, um, socially distance or physically distance uh, meetings of one or two, whatever it happens to be in those, I'll leave it up to those particular gui uh, guidelines in the different provinces. But however ways that we can build social connection and so to try to remove uh, feelings of isolation um, and in particular there's always people who are probably left behind particularly in teams um, that might be feeling more socially isolated so even reaching out to different people that you might not normally reach out to um, on particular teams or coaches that you might reach out to other coaches or, or whatever it happens to be to reach out to each other to check in to see how they are doing and creating those social connections and then last one, I just wanted to talk about helping others. So helping others actually um, enhances our own well-being. We, we tend to feel better when we, we actually help other people out. So hopefully they feel better as well, but it's also one way that also helps us feel better. There's a few reasons for that. One of the is that it actually pulls us out from focusing so much on ourselves um, in our current circumstances and to be able to actually assist other people. It feels good, right? And that's something I certainly uh, can empathize in terms of uh, coaching or like missing coaching at the moment um, is that I don't, and I also teach as well. So those two things combined, I, I feel like I'm not necessarily helping people at the moment and that's something um, that certainly I, I'm looking to you know to find different ways to try to connect and help other people and so um, I wanted as a group because I think it can provide such positive um, you know, just sort of our last question here as a group, I wanted us to brainstorm ideas because you folks are so have so much experience with this. But how can we help others within our rugby and broader communities? This is one of the things I love so much about the rugby community is that we really do come together and um, or at least try to come together and we are we're, we're team players. And so how can we how can we help each other out in our broader communities? Out? It can be just small actions. It doesn't have to be world changing or anything like that. But let's see if we can get some ideas out here and brainstorm how we could do this. Or maybe some of the things that you have done. Oh, Strava challenge, nice. Donate blood together, wonderful. That's excellent. Need positive food, excellent. Food bank drives, excellent. Quiz night, love that I get to know each other a little bit differently. You find those fun, fun things out about each other. Um, maybe get some laughs out of it, it's good. Listen to them, wonderful. Keep connected, yeah, that helps other people, right? The, when we um, put ourselves out there for that connection. Uh, excellent. Backyard fire pit. Love it. I want to know where that is. I, I, I'm on the Vancouver lifestyle here, the condo, small condo lifestyle. So I'm jealous. That's fantastic. Excellent. Connect during social media. Set weekly challenges. Excellent. So um, again, that connection and creating a shared experience and supporting each other through that. Good. Okay, so something to think about of how we can help other people too. Now, I do uh, I do say that with in mind that some people might be feeling overwhelmed at the moment and are, are just need to uh, focus on what they have to do. So that's not to say um, that everybody's in a position to be able to provide that support, but um, it is something that often we can do to, to help uh, keep in touch with each other and our teammates and our coaches and everything else. Good, thanks folks. Thanks for your participation and sharing. All right, um, so we just wanted to share some tools and resources with you folks. Um, and you can download these, uh, again, these slides at the end. I'll tell you how to do that in one moment. Um, but basically what we have here is some free resources that you can access. Uh, so if you're interested in building that mindfulness, which is part of that self-compassion uh, that we've been talking about today, um, there is Headspace and Calm apps, which are excellent. Um, there's some breathing um, apps as well. And then there is uh, some yoga apps as well. And um, the one I, I've been really into yoga with Adrian. Um, and so doing um, a lot, there's a lot of free resources at the moment that can help us um, manage uh, different emotions and at the moment. 
And then lastly, um, we just wanted to also share some mental health resources. So if you do are, if you are experiencing a challenging time, um, there is help, there is support out there. Um, and there are people that you can talk to. So uh, these two resources also, uh, they're basically links to lists of resources based on the province that you're in. Um, that might be helpful to you to reach out for support. Summer, do you have anything you'd like to add there? No, that's great. Uh, I think we can take some questions though. <laughs> Wonderful, awesome. Thanks folks. Sounds great. This has been excellent. Um, thanks everyone for your participation thus far. Uh, it's been really interesting to see um, how everyone's doing, how everyone's feeling. Um, so I'll, I'll just reiterate, we have had a, a couple questions come in, so we'll start with those. But um, for those of you who uh, you know are still with us, take a look at, at that questions tab and, and type in anything that um, maybe you wanted more information on. Uh, maybe it's something that we uh, that we didn't touch on and that you'd like uh, to hear from uh, from these two on. Uh, please feel free and um, type your questions in, and we will spend a few more minutes here together and and, uh, and answer some of those for you. So one of them that that did come in was. I'm looking for maybe a, a little bit more information on um, helping to deal with uh, those that, those negative thoughts and that that maybe false narrative that we tell ourselves. And and so for those maybe persistent thoughts that just won't go away, how, are are there any more maybe recommended um, strategies or, or coping mechanisms, things or ways that we can think about um, those negative thoughts to to help? dissuade them or, or reframe the situation for ourselves. Do you want to go or? Doesn't, um, go ahead, Summer. I'll, I'll build. Okay. Do you start? Well, I, I can start. You'll probably build, but I was going to go back to something you had said before. I think with negative thoughts, they're, they're hard to change. If it's your default, the way you think the patterns of your brain are hard to change. So it takes some work and it takes some time and effort to actually change them. So you, so you do need to start to challenge them a bit. Okay. So, and, and what you said before, I think the best way to do that is to question yourself and say, what would I tell a teammate in this situation, which is exactly what Carolyn was explaining before. So if you say, if, say, if you're being super hard on yourself, say, well, what, what would I tell my teammate? And likely that's a lot better than what you do tell yourself. Mm -hmm. And then see if you can apply that to yourself. And I know for very, very, like if your pattern is, is hard to change, um, it might not be easy at first, but do it. It's the first step because your brain takes a while to rewire. So even just stopping, stopping yourself from saying that, questioning it a little bit, and then maybe thinking about applying it to yourself. So what would I tell myself a teammate and then tell yourself that? That's the process. But the idea is that it takes work. It's just like rugby. You can't just pass the ball the first time you touch it. It takes time to learn that process and to change the way you think. So I would really encourage you, best thing is like, well, what, what would I tell a teammate? Try to apply it to yourself and then keep with it. Be confident that with time that will change. Nice, thanks, Carolyn. Anything to add? No, that that's wonderful. Um, I, Summer said it um, excellently in, in building off that those self compassion, and, and that can be tough to to engage with and, and believe that you you can extend yourself self compassion in the first place too. But even thinking about those particular questions, the other thing I just wanted to add on that is when you're, when you're thinking about it. Um, I think we often default to trying to make the thoughts stop as opposed to naming them, acknowledging them, and then trying to maybe um, challenge those particular thoughts. So sometimes you're like, I just want them to stop. So just some of the exercises that Summer was talking about, about um, this is how I'm feeling currently, uh, how, how, what would I tell a friend? And then let's see if I can extend to myself might be a bit more effective in actually trying to um, move through those particular emotions and thoughts, negative thoughts, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. I had a, um, a a sports psych that I chatted with once um, talking to me about, it, it was almost as if uh, he, he was saying you create almost a persona around, around those negative thoughts. And, uh, and so if you can, if you can acknowledge them and then put them aside as almost someone else is saying them and, and just go back and be like, I hear you, you know, I hear you, but I'm not going to listen to you right now. Yeah. Um, so uh, that was an interesting approach. It was 
I don't know. I don't know if I'd go so far as to create an, another personality in my mind. I don't know that I need that, but uh, but it was definitely an interesting approach. Um, we have a couple of comments here. One person mentioning um, cognitive behavior therapy and and wondering if you would advise uh, and and not being um, not knowing a whole lot of what that means myself. Maybe what you just talked about it is exactly uh, CBT, but um, wondering if if uh, if people can look at, you know, some free online courses and online resources around um, learning more about CBT, if you think that would be uh, useful. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think one of the things that I'm going to be a bit tentative in answering this question is that um, uh, my degree is or my background and training is in sports psychology, and sort of where the boundaries sort of end there is to do uh, counseling, and so CBT is often used in a counseling context. Um, and so there might be principles that we, we use of CBT um, within sport and exercise psychology. And so I, I'm a bit hesitant to answer that question perhaps only because um, I think uh, from my understanding, different uh, therapeutic modalities work differently for some people versus others and, and what might be effective given uh, what they would like to work through. And so um, I would say potentially speak to um, a counselor and maybe access some of the, the the free uh, mental um, health uh, resources that are available or well-being resources would even they um, would um, might be the one way to start exploring mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason I was like smiling because that's basically what we were saying in the last question. Very simply, it's challenging your thoughts and looking for another solution. So you can literally just stop, observe, challenge mm. those thoughts. Like what you want to do is look for evidence that supports it and see if it's real, see if it's not, you know, like, um, like when you say you're stupid because you dropped a ball, right? Are you really stupid? No, everybody makes mistakes. Yeah. Okay. And then you kind of reorganize and move forward. So we use that in self-talk techniques. It's, it's, informed by cognitive behavioral therapy but it's the same principle so like yeah mm -hmm. yeah any workshop any worksheet that you can find online or just going through the same thing like what would you tell a teammate challenging it um, is basically uh, informed by CBT mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's uh, it's important what resonates for me in what you both just talked about was um, kind of seeking clarity and, and looking for the truth in in what just happened around you, right? Because we we do tend to tell ourselves things that may or may not be uh, entirely true. Um, and I know, uh, I, I mean, certainly that I'm sure it happens with everyone. But sometimes we say, as as women, we tend to doubt ourselves a little bit more uh, in specific situations. So uh, some of the strategies, and someone's mentioned it in a in a question here, is having someone that you turn to to say. You know, okay, what what did really just happen? Is is this my fault or not? You know, like help me see the truth here. So uh, the question is, do do either of you or do both of you have kind of someone that you turn to 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 seek clarity from and to um, to reassure you in times like this? Well, that's a personal question. <laughs> it was. I know. <laughs> we can leave it. We can leave it at yes or no. Yeah. No. Uh, of of course. Of course. Uh, it really helps, and I think. Uh, as a probably on the harder on myself side as, as an individual um yeah I do reach out to people and I have challenged those thoughts one thing I'll say is doing this as a profession like learning to help others see the positive and question thoughts has really changed my brain so I'm much quicker to see the positive or the real side now that I've been doing it so long with athletes and stuff so it just speaks to the repeating and practicing but certainly reach out have friends and mentors and colleagues that uh, then can help you see the real real situation very cool um, very similar. Uh, the short answer is yes. Um, it's something um, certainly my wife and uh, is probably one of the bigger biggest supports um, in that way. But um, just even having people questioning, I, I find even also to just trying to 
organize your thoughts by um, actually trying to verbally communicate what you think is happening. Oftentimes helps you, you work through the situation as well to see, um, helps you question. Um, all of a sudden you start saying something out loud and you're like, oh, oh okay, maybe, well, maybe that's not quite it. And so um, I think there's also a lot of value in that and, and just, um, you know, creating, uh, you know, connecting with people as well. So whether it's a teammate, a, a friend, um, a significant other, um, yeah, just uh, having those conversations and sharing. And, and um, there's also something pretty powerful in um, when you share something that you create this sort of, I don't want to say vulnerable space, but there often creates connection through vulnerability and the willingness and openness um, to share a particular experience too. So it often creates pretty some pretty strong bonds as well. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I, I hear that. There's definitely been um, instances where uh, as a coach and um, I've shared some kind of vulnerability in myself and it's absolutely facilitated uh, a better relationship with, with some athletes and kind of creates a shared experience uh, for us. So I, I, I definitely see the, uh, the, the, the positive and the usefulness of, of that for sure. Um, we have uh, we have another question that is a little bit more about um, maybe how our, our kids are dealing with this um, with this situation and and uh, wondering if you have any advice or thoughts around um, around having conversations or or helping uh, maybe some of our juniors or or minors uh, rugby players out there who may not have the uh, maybe ability to, to express exactly what they're feeling or why they're upset or things like this. Are there, are there ways we can support them and, and help them work through? Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, like it depends on the age um, for sure. Uh, what, what I would say, first of all, is I think I, I do talk to a lot of my, my old teammates and friends who have kids um, and everybody's really experiencing this differently. And some might have a real hard time, some might not. Like some kids are like, this is great. I get to play games, you know, and, and just be outside with my sister. And and some like of a younger kids, I have a friend who's, whose son is having panic attacks at night. So it, it's a range. And I think just talking about it within those, within, limits but it, like one thing you do if you have really young kids you can you can draw pictures of emojis basically of emotions and just say hey point to it like what are you feeling today and talk to me more about that so it's it's more like instead of just saying like i just like point to it and tell me more try and listen try and hear what they're saying acknowledge their emotion so we're really i don't this is not fair because i'm not a parent but i think that we're really quick to say don't worry about it you're fine Right, but we're not really listening. We're not really empathizing. We're not really going there and saying, I hear you. I can understand why you're sad right now. That must be really hard. What do you think we can do to make that better? Right, so to just like, I think, depending on the age, just allow them the space to really explore it, say it, listen, and then say, how can we do work on this together? I'd mm -hmm. say that, that would be what I would recommend the most. Nice. Nice. Uh, very some, yeah. I'd say very similar things that uh, came to my mind. Um, and just the only other thing I I thought of was um, you can give them the screen, not to, like necessarily do whatever screens. I, I have zero recommendations on that, but um, to take photos <laughs> or something like that if they're not much into drawing, um, to to even express them. So tell me like what's your day like or you, photo, you can ask some different questions like that and then probe around some of the emotions as well. Yeah, um, I myself was not a parent, so I, I will leave leave that one. Yeah. Three, three non three non parents on here. Um, yeah. answering the questions but i i do think you know i i mean I, I don't have kids but i have nieces and i i think certainly i could see myself having conversations like that with them so i i think that that um would be very helpful yeah thank you both for that I, well, um, follow up with that i think like the same way we help a friend but just don't just don't try and make it better just just sit there with them experience it and that's that's uh sorry i just wanted to say that yeah Absolutely. Well, um, well, we'll leave the questions open for just another minute here, but it looks like we've we've answered uh, most that have come through and I've consolidated a few ar around the same theme. So um, we do have a, a comment here from uh, 
uh, from a rugby teammate from days gone by, Lana Burton is, has said, uh, just wanted to thank uh, you both for running the session. And she's going to run something very similar for uh, her, her graduating high school students um, that she's working with. And she thinks that this will be very helpful for all of them as well. So uh, thanks for tuning in, Lana, appreciate it and appreciate your comment. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thanks, folks. This has been uh, this has been a pleasure. Thanks for uh, participating and, and for tuning in. And uh, thank you, Carolyn and Summer. Uh, this is this has been really great. And the information you've shared, I think, will help a lot of people um, to certainly cope and, and support each other. It's it's so important. You know, we talk about the rugby and, and the importance of getting back on the pitch. And and, uh, and we do absolutely all want to get back there. Um, but the you know the human experience and the human connection is really the most important piece right now so uh thank you for both coming on uh, tonight and, and talking a little bit more about that really appreciate it um to everyone uh, else out there again uh, thank you for being with us uh, i will remind you that uh this webinar is being recorded and will be shared on rugby canada's youtube uh page um shortly after uh, or in the next few days um i will also remind you that there is still a rugby ban uh, on all rugby activities so uh keep in touch with your provincial unions and uh keep an eye on your provincial health guidelines and uh, we will certainly be in touch uh, over the next few weeks um, with plans to, to get back and return to play. Uh, really looking forward to that. Yeah. So thanks again very much. Any last comments, Carolyn Summer? No, really appreciate the chance to, to work with Carolyn. It's the first time and it's been great. It's what shows what good teammates are like. <laughs> Thank you. No, it, it's been it's been wonderful to work with Summer and Jackie. And just um, thanks for coming uh, tonight and and um, sharing and um, sharing some of your experiences. We really appreciate it. So thank you very much. We have an ongoing theme of former national team players who are doing pretty extraordinary things uh, in and around the rugby sphere. So uh, really fun to to keep that trend going. Um, <laughs> All right. Have a great evening, uh, everybody. Take care, stay safe, and uh, we will see you next week um, for our, our next uh, webinar, which is around professional development, former, formal and informal, and uh, having a little chat uh, with Andy Plymer and Beth Bartz, uh, myself, and Nathan Abdel-Noor about that next week. So we'll see you then. Have a good evening. Thanks.